Hello, and welcome to another demonstration of IBM Data Power Operations Dashboard, or DPOD for short. In the following demonstration, we will walk you through the scenario of a developer who investigates an error in a non-production environment using a self-service user. He does so without the need to contact a Data Power Administrator, and without even having any technical knowledge of Data Power Operations. However, for this to work, we need to give these non-administrative users only limited access to Depod's dashboard. For example, we only want them to see specific services on specific domains. See configuration data as view only, etc. For such cases, Depod provides role-based security, which manages these permissions for certain types of users. Let's see how this can be accomplished. First, we need to define a new custom role. To do this, we'll navigate to Manage, Security, and Roles. Here, the Depot Administrator can define custom roles, which limit user access only to relevant information. Let's look at the custom role we've already defined, named Bank Investigate Role. We can see that users under this role are not able to view raw messages, nor are they able to see the payload. Also, these users are to be limited to the Bank A and Bank B domains. So such a user will be able to see basic transaction log information of any service on these two domains without having to contact the Data Power Administrator to do so. To see how this works, let's sign in with one of the developer users belonging to this role. It's quite common for Data Power Administrators to spend a lot of time answering questions from developers or end users during the development, test, and quality assurance stages. Using Depod, many of these everyday activities, such as troubleshooting transactions or viewing configuration properties, can be offloaded to developers or to other personnel, saving administrators, developers, as well as managers precious time. In the recent activity dashboard, we can see that this user is limited to viewing transactions of only two domains, Bank A and Bank B. This can be seen in the Domain Activity box below. Now let's open the Service Per Device dashboard. Here we can see the way transactions of a particular service are distributed between monitored devices. So if we have a single service which is running on several devices, we will be able to see how many transactions were processed on each device for this particular service. In the case of this particular demonstration, we only have a single data power gateway device. Now let's filter for errors. We can see that four services have encountered errors in the last hour. Let's focus on the create account service. Here we see the list of transactions processed by this service within the last hour. If we select one of these transactions, we can see that only part of the information for this transaction is displayed. This is due to the limited access we've given this role for this user. So for example, on the left, we can see all the general transaction information. We can also see the error analysis message, but we don't see the detailed raw messages column of the transaction logs, which usually appears at the bottom left of the screen. Similarly, the user does not have permissions to view payload information, which also usually appears at the bottom left of the screen. However, this user does have access to see the transaction analysis, and so he can see the error analysis message, HTTP 500 fail return from backend. This is enough for the user to conclude that the problem originated in the backend, and not within the data power policy. As this user is not a data power administrator, we don't want to give him permissions to view data power logs, but we do and have given him permission to troubleshoot simple errors. In this way, we can define information access permissions for developers, end users, and other personnel, so that they can use Depod as a self-service tool to monitor their systems without having to wait for a data power gateway administrators to be available. This saves time for everyone involved 
as well as making the development, testing, and quality assurance stages much more fluent. Thank you for joining us. We hope you find this demonstration useful. You're welcome to see other troubleshooting scenarios in our other videos.